In this video, I'm going to talk about the equals method and how you can override it in your own classes. This is specific to Java, but it also teaches you a few uh, object orientation paradigms, like the equals method. So, let's think about a, a little class that I have here. I have a little class called test1. Uh, I import the scanner for a reason that I'll uh, comment in a second. I only have a main method and I just want to test a few things. First, I have three strings. I've used the new operator in the strings, okay, just so they're in different locations in memory. When you actually do this, uh, string a equals whatever, hello, the computer will do something slightly different uh, with that string. So uh, let's look at let's look at uh, what happens here. So I'm going to compile this class, okay, and let me show you what I'm doing here with the system out print lines. So the first thing that I'm doing here in line 13, okay, is I'm comparing S1 to itself to S1. Is this string the same as this string using the equals operator? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare S1 to S2. Is this string equals to this string? Okay. Then I'm going to compare S2 to S3. I'm going to compare is this string here equals to the next string down. Now if S2 is equal to S1 and S2 is equal to S3, then it's obvious that S1 is equal to S3. That's called transitivity. So here I test that. S1 equals to S3. The other thing that, um, that I need to, um, that I need to uh, test in equals is what happens if I give it a null, right? Will S1, this string, be equal to a null? And then the other thing is, well, what if I have another object? In this case, I just created a scanner. Okay, whatever that object is, no concern, it's just not a string. And I'm going to say, is S1 equals to the scanner S4? The response to this two, if the equals is well implemented, should be false. If the equals is correctly implemented, then the answer to the first four should be true. So let's run it and see what the answers are. And we got that. We got the first four are true and the last two are false. So that's how it should behave. Now, let's look a little bit of a, at, at a different kind of example. What happens if we have, I create a little person class here. Whoops. I create a little person class over here, okay, that has a name and an age. And I create two people with the same name and the same age. And then in addition, I'm going to print out whether person1 is equals to person2. And I'm going to get rid of the string stuff because it was just to exemplify. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to compile this and execute it as soon as it's done. And I see that the computer says that they're not equal, they're false. But they have the same information in them. So how can this be? Well, what happens is that all Java classes inherit from a class called object. If you understand what inheritance is, you probably do because we're going to overwrite a method. But if you do not know that, watch the videos on inheritance. So now, uh, every Java class inherits from object. And the object class actually has an equals method in it. Okay, The signature of that equals method is that it receives an object. So the signature, if I want to overwrite, override the, uh, um, the equals method, I start with override and then the signature. It's public. We know that it returns true or false, so it has to be Boolean return type. The name we know, it's equals. And the parameter, because we could pass the, the string, the same object, we could pass null. And because we can pass any other object, the parameter is object. Oh. Okay, that's how we override the equals method. Okay, now we have to do a couple of things, but before we do that, I want to um, I want to say a couple of other things. The equals method, just like I'm using it here, 
it serves to compare one class to another class. So this class to this other class. In here, some people do this. I'm comparing this to an other object, okay? And one, um, and, and in order for us to comply with the transitivity of the equals method and the ability to test for nulls and everything, right? The one one way to do that, there are many many ways you can code this, and there's like small one-liners, but I'm going to explain this in in a sort of a serial way so you understand the things, the checks that happen here. The first thing that I have to check is, well, I'm going to say if the other object, right? If the other object is null, then I'm going to return false. So I, because whatever this object is, this person, if I pass a null, well, you know, it's false. By contract, any null object is going to be um, false. Now, another thing that I that I can check is, well. Let's say if it's not null. What if it's a different kind of class? So I can say the following. If the object, if the other object, is not an instance of that operator, you can check in other videos, but basically test whether your class is an instance of, in this, in this case, you know, person, right? So is, if the other object coming in is not, an instance of the class person, then I also return false, right? Lastly, if it passes these two tests, then I know it's a person and I know it's not null. So I can do the following thing. I can do person, other, and then cast this object to a person because I know it is a person, right? I cast the other to a person, I'm sorry, I'm gonna put, put it, call it uh, P2. All right, I cast it to a person and then I say, I will say if uh, p2 dot name, right? Because this is a string, I'm gonna use the, the equals method of the string equals uh, this object's name, right? If, if the, the other object, which is now p2, that name, is equal to the name that I have in this class, remember this and other, right? And P2's age is equal to this dot age, okay? Then I'm going to return true. All right, so let's compile this class in case I have mistakes, which I'm bound to happen. About to happen. Yes, I have a return statement. Okay, so if this is this, this, this uh, return true, and then I'm gonna say else return return false. All right. So if the name or age are not the same, then return false. So this method now, if I go to my other class, my test class. Now these two objects have the same name and, and age. So if I execute this, I'm gonna get true because these two are the same person. They have the same information. Now, for good housekeeping, a couple of things that one can shorten here is you can simply do this. Return that because this is a Boolean condition that's gonna be true if the objects have the same name and age and it's gonna be false if they don't for you to think about it, right? The other thing is that instance of also checks for null. So you can just take these, the comparison away and actually save this and that will work. For example, this is one way you can make it shorter. There's, there's other ways to shorten this as well. Um, so you can compile this and then execute my test one and you should get true. And indeed, you get true. And that's how you override uh, the equals method.